good morning students so in the i hope you have solved the last class problem if you have any doubt let me know fine we will solve once offline class starts right so since we have ended cross rate uh, calculation in last class in today's class even i have told earlier also from today class uh, we will start foreign exchange theories right so we have three theories three foreign exchange theories one is called purchase power parity or in short we call it as it is popular as ppp theory and second theory we are going to discuss is interest rate parity that is irp and the third we are going to discuss is international fisher's effect it's also renowned as also called as ife right international fisher's effect so all the three theories contains problem and from the same point of view both purchase power parity theory and interest rate parity theory is very important fine so purchase there are two versions we are going to discuss in this uh, purchase power parity theory one is absolute version of the theory and another one is called relative version so absolute version of the ppp theory never considers inflation in specific country and when when, when inflation is included or inflation is considered we call it as relative version of ppp theory so ppp theory it is endorsed by or pioneered purchase power parity theory is by mr gustav kassel so gustav kassel endorsed ppp theory both absolute version and relative version so earlier ppp theory was never considering inflation rate in any country so it is called as absolute version right so we will start with the absolute version of ppp theory so before that how do we say that how do we say if the exchange rate between dollar to indian rupee is 1 dollar is worth rupees 70 how we are determining this exchange rate that's what these foreign exchange theories are discussed so how one how the exchange rate between two countries are derived or determined and what are the factors uh, which which impacts on this rate right and what are the limitations of this theory we are also going to discuss about limitations of all these three theories fine so 1 dollar is equals to rupees 70 right so mr gustav kassel says that on the basis of certain commonly used goods in both the country we derive this exchange rate for example if the rice if the rice is used both in us and both in india and rice is, rice can be considered as commonly used commodity in both the country then on the basis of price of the rice per kg rice is priced as 1 dollar in us and the same unit of 1 kg rice is priced at rupees 70 in india so straight away we have determined the exchange rate on the basis of underlying commodity or underlying goods which is commonly used in both the countries which is commonly used both in us as well as india so that's on the basis of price of this rice we have derived the exchange rate between dollar to rupee as 1 dollar is 70 rupees right because 1 kg of rice is priced at 1 dollar in us and the same 1 1 kg of rice is priced at rupees 70 in india that's why 
on the basis of price the exchange rate is determined as 1 dollar is equal to rupees 70 but after certain days we have derived 1 dollar is 70 rupees after certain days after 3 months 4 months 5 months the exchange rate is same 1 dollar 70 rupees but due to the large amount of uh, rice being produced in India so law of supply in US the price remained same as 1 kilo 1 dollar per 1 kilo rice but in India due to uh, supply of rice abundant supply of rice and abundant cultivation of rice land the price is reduced by rupees 50 per kg what happens now see the exchange rate is one dollar seventy rupees but the rice price of the rice in India is rupees 50 per kilogram but whereas in US it remained one dollar right now what happens a person in a US sitting watching all these things he thinks that see if I go to foreign exchange market the conversion rate between dollar to rupee is one dollar seventy rupees I will convert the convert my dollar into Indian rupee I will go to India and procure one kilogram of rice there so what he gets is once he converted his dollar to Indian rupee he got rupees 70 right so he comes down to India to buy the rice from India he paid rupees 50 per kg right if he would have been bought the rice at US then he would have paid one dollar right instead instead he never bought the rice at US market instead he went to foreign exchange market and converted his dollar to Indian rupee he got rupees 70 right so if he would have bought the rice at US he would have paid one dollar per kg now he comes down to India he has rupees 70 with him and he buys one kilogram of rice at the rate of rupees 50 per kg now the rupees 20 is still with him that that means if he buys rice in US he would have paid straight away one dollar right instead he he's buying the rice from India at the rate of rupees 50 after converting his dollar into Indian rupee he has bought one kilogram of rice in India he paid rupees 50 and again even though he has one kilogram of rice with him along with he has rupees 20 as a surplus right that means after seeing all these transaction we can conclude here that before that the word parity means match we are discussing purchase power parity so parity means equal or match or balance right so here the purchase absolute version of purchase power parity theory explains that what happened here exchange rate remained at one dollar rupees 70 per one dollar but the underlying assets price underlying commodity that is rice in this example the price there is no parity between exchange rate and the price of this commodity right so that's what absolute version of purchase power parity theory explains that if there is no parity between exchange rate if there is no parity that means exchange rate is rupees 70 per dollar and price of the commodity price of the commodity or rice is rupees 50 per kg right so when there is no parity between these two this rice or this commodity 
moves from country to country. That's where import and export started. That's what absolute version of purchase power parity theory endorsed by Mr. Gustav Castle is explaining. Right? So, when there is no parity or mismatch between the exchange rate and price of the commonly used goods and service, then that particular goods or service starts moving from one country to another. Continuing his uh, purchase power parity theory, he explains that. See, now this rice started moving from India to US. That means, now the rice got demand from US. The Indian rice got demand from US market, when demand increases, price also increases, right? So because of vast market in US, demand for Indian rice got increased, when demand increased, price also increases, right? So from the 50 rupees per kg, since the demand is increased, demand has been increased. So price also being increased from rupees seven, rupees 50 to rupees 70 now, right? That means again there is a parity between exchange rate, that is rupees 70 per dollar, and the price of the commodity due to the increased demand, price of the rice also being increased. So, again it is rupees 70 per kg, right? Now there is a parity between these two, right? So what we have discussed so far, when there is no parity between exchange rate and price of the commodity, then goods starts moving from one country to another. Until when there is a parity between these two, goods stops moving from one country to another. That's what absolute version of the purchase power parity theory explains, right? So, in the first step, we have derived the exchange rate on the basis of commonly used goods and services, on the basis of basket of commonly used goods and services in both the country. In our example, we have taken rupee against US dollar, right? On the basis of commonly used goods, we have taken rice as an example, and one kilo rice is priced at one dollar in US and the same one kilo rice is priced at rupees 70 in India. So on the basis of commonly used goods, we have derived the exchange rate from dollar to rupee as one dollar is equal to rupees 70. Now, when there is no parity between exchange rate and price of the rice in India, that, that is 50 rupees per kg, then the rice started moving from India to US. That, is, that means rice is being exported from India to US. Until, again, the, when there is a parity between these two, exchange rate and price of the commodity, the rice being stopped from being imported from India. Right? So that's what absolute version of the purchase power parity theory explains. Fine? In next class, we are going to discuss relative version of purchase power parity theory. Thank you.